Greetings. Welcome to Nature's Bounties. It's such a privilege and such a joy that we have such a program like this. Now, I would like to talk about something very special. And during the next weeks, as you continue to stay and keep this appointment with me, then we are going to have an exploration to do. But let's ask the Lord to bless us before we continue. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will guide our minds as we explore the things of nature so that we can be blessed and also be a blessing to others. Bless us now, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So what's on top of my mind now? It's something that really is a great blessing to humanity. And what's that? Water. Uh -uh. Simple? Yes, water. There is power in water and that power we want to explore so that we can use it for our healing and for the healing of others that God will bring along our path. The wonders that water can perform, I tell you, it is beyond our human comprehension. But there is a lot that we can learn and there is a lot that we can use water for that we have not yet been able to do but we can begin to do it. How, what is it about water? How can water, how can water make man whole? Man is weak, man is sick, man needs help, and there is water. God has placed many simple things in nature, nutritious food, sunlight, fresh air, non-poisonous herbs, rest, Trusting in him. These are wonderful, simple things that God has placed in our hands, even moderate exercise. Now, the elements that we need to live, these are all contained in all these simple things that God has given us. Therefore, we must continue to exploit them with thankfulness in our heart for the things that he's doing for us. Let's dedicate our lives to him so that we can continue to enjoy these simple things that he has given us to bless us and for us to live a very, very abundant life. In the sacred scriptures, there is something that I have found that is basic to life, and that is blood. The Bible says in Leviticus 17 verse 11 that the life of the flesh is in the blood. Hmm, wonderful. The life that we have, it's not in the heart, it's not in the lungs, neither do we have it in the limbs, the tissue, the eyes, and any or other parts of our body, but the life of the body is in the blood. Because it's the blood, the fluid that carries all of the life-given things, the nutrition that we need, the oxygen that we cannot do without in very short time, and then getting rid of the waste to help us to live life to the fullest. Because without removal of all of that, even the nourishment itself will not be of the best benefit to us. So what has water got to do with all of this? First off, I'm emphasizing blood because the life of the flesh is in the blood. In Bible times, when God was directly involved with his people, he told them, do not eat blood, do not eat fat, when he allowed them to eat flesh. Even in doing that, he said, don't eat the blood. Why? Because the blood is life. Now, water and blood are very essential elements that we will use to help us have life by using water. Because water is going to work with the blood the life-giving fluid in our body that will help us to help the body to get back to where it's supposed to be. There is precious things in life, and many of those things are simple. The most precious things actually are very simple, and there is where water lies. We will not forget to remember the fact that it is the life of Jesus Christ the blood that is given for us for the atonement of our sin and to bring us back in one with our Father, our Heavenly Father. Now, blood. We can see, as I just gave a few examples, of how important blood is. Blood rapidly moves through our entire bodies to help us to have life. It is what carries the cells, the red blood cells, the white blood cells, 
the hemoglobin to get to all the cells in our in the body to help the body to be in the best of health the heart for instance is very important but it's only a pumping machine when we come to think and to assess the role of the heart the brain itself will do all its work and can do all its work when there is nourishing blood supplying oxygen and all the nourishment needed for the brain why not keep the heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life that's in the bible in proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 therefore we want to talk about all of these things so that we can see how we can tap these resources to the best that we can the blood and the water those two are very important when we use water we are actually going to tap on the properties of the blood now let's look at this important uh, fluid the blood first of all just to mention a few things i'm not a uh, what do i how do i call myself uh, somebody that studies blood into details, but just to know that at least there are some elements in the blood. The red blood cells, for instance, very, very important in terms of sending the nutrition that will be needed to feed the cells. It's the carrier of nutrition and oxygen. Then the white blood cell is the fighter, the army that gets rid of poisons, actually poison in terms of virus, bacteria that fight our body that will make it difficult for the body to be in the good health. Under the most circumstances, we have about 7,000 to 9,000 white blood cells per tiny drop of blood because that's what the sample that is taken that is used to assess how many we have in the body. But when it's time to fight, white blood cells will increase to 15,000 to 25,000 per drop of blood that is taken for sample. But all in all, there are about 25 trillion blood cells in the body. They, if they lay them end to end, they will reach four times around the whole earth. Isn't that amazing? Now, this is the healing power of the body. That's why we want to look at it a little closely Though we may not be scientists as such, we may not be in, uh, studying all of the details of how the blood work, how the cells, how they do their work and so forth, but just enough for us to understand this very important part, how to use water for healing of the body. When we talk about blood and water, especially blood, there are two great limitations. And because of these two great limitations, we will use water to help the limitations. The first one is that there isn't enough blood. Mm, really? Yes, there isn't enough blood to serve the purpose for which the body needs the blood for. Because there is just a certain amount of blood, therefore the body will need to circulate them constantly and evenly and flowing very fast to the need of the body. When we look at it that way, there isn't enough blood. The second problem is that blood tends to congeal where there is a problem in the body. In fact, as a side note, if you have problems anywhere, and I have learned this very quickly as I was learning all of these important simple things of nature, that if there be pain in any area of the body, it is a signal that there isn't enough blood circulation in that area. What it means is that when blood is getting to that particular place, it's not going in, supplying the nourishment, removing the waste on time to allow new refreshing blood to come to that place. Therefore, just keep that at the back of our minds that whenever there is pain, what can I do? to improve circulation to that area to relieve the pain. That's a very important thing. So blood tends to congeal, blood tends to pull in a particular place where there is damage or whether, where there is problem. So in order for blood to flow properly, we will need to give it some help. We will need to bring a larger quantity of blood to that place to give it nourishment, to give it oxygen and all that is needed. 
And what has been found simple method to help is the use of water. It is called water therapy or hydrotherapy. And in the next few weeks, I invite you to join me to help you and help ourselves to see how we can use this simple thing of nature, water, to help the body get back to how it should be working. The wonderful thing about nature is that its state can be altered very easily. Water can become hot, water can become cold, water can become iced, water can become steam. Because it's able to change shape, it's able to change its position in terms of flow to one area or the other. And because it can produce what is called latent heat, it can retain enough heat long enough to use the effect of that heat. And water is so versatile. It's so wonderful. Then there's nowhere one can live. You must have water there. It's not possible to live in any place without water. Why? We ourselves are made of water. 70, 80 to 90% of most parts of our body is filled with water. Water can retain heat and cold better than any other common element that we have around us. So it's one of those things that we can easily get. Water, like blood, is a very special gift from God. And when we begin to see how it is very useful to make man whole, oh, we will wonderfully thank God that we have come to realize how fortunate we are that a simple element in nature can be used so effectively to bring healing to the body. How do we then intelligently use water? That is what we are going to explore because if we can intelligently use water, it's abundant. The whole planet is filled with water. More than 75% of this earth is filled with water. 70% at least of the earth's surface are oceans, rivers, lakes, and underground we have water also. In the air that we breathe, we have water. Therefore, because of its abundance, it's one of those things that we can easily get to lay our hands on to help us in healing. When we talk about natural health care, the one thing I have come to appreciate, and I hope that I can transfer that to you too, who are lovers of nature, that water is a very, very simple fluid that we can use that will help us in restoration. It can be used for both old and young. That's another wonderful thing about it. Yes, there are some precautions, and we are going to talk about those ones. There are some things that we need to do, and we are going to show how exactly they are to be done, so that we do not make any mistake, so that we do not take any things for granted. Because you see, when we talk about simple things of nature, they are very, very powerful. And it will be demonstrated enough that we can see how powerful water is. If we have ever seen flood, washing away houses, carrying trailers, carrying big trucks, 16 wheelers, just lifting them up and just flowing down water streams. Have you seen water change the shape of bridges? Oh, once we see all of these things, it seems to us that, oh, that's the water that is in the flood. That's the water that is far away. That's big body of water. But you know, there is this small water that we can change into what and how to use in such a way that we'll see that water is very, very, very powerful. And therefore, I'm going to continue to emphasize that you do not want to miss the next several episodes in the following weeks ahead as we see in details. If you remember, if you have been with us on this program and you have been watching and listening, 
We have promised right from introduction that we will use simple things of nature and they will be demonstrated. If we don't show them how they can be put into use, then that promise will not be fulfilled. But I love one thing with my Father and my God. When he gives promises, he fulfills them. And I want to be like him. Therefore, by the grace of God, with the team that I'm working with here, I know that all the promises that we make shall be fulfilled so that we can help humanity. That's the bottom line. To help humanity in difficult times that we are living in, in difficult times that we don't know what is still coming, but we know that it's just not all right again. It's not just all feeling so good again. Therefore, we need to understand some simple things, especially in this part of the world where the doctor-patient ratio hmm, is very, very poor. Have you ever been to the hospital and you have been in a place where you have a long queue or even getting there? Or when we look back at the problems that we have faced in the world recently, how some people could not even get to the hospital and how when some got there, they could not receive help on time. And the same episodes is still being repeated over and over and over again. And hospitals many times get overwhelmed. Caregivers are trying their utmost best to do their work and to help those who get to see them. But then, when we think deeply about all these things, we have personal responsibilities. And it is that personal responsibility for our health for the health of our children, our spouses, our parents also, who may be old or middle age, and we are young and strong, we have a responsibility to take care of them. And therefore, what we want to do is to offer that help that will help in taking care of personally oneself and then taking care of others. This is one of the ways in which we can do that. One of the ways in which we can help humanity in such simple way. It doesn't cost a lot. Yes, there are times when we may have to purchase a few things to help us in using water. But nevertheless, when we compare it to the needs that we will or may have to embark on when we get very sick, we will know that this is a preventive measure. And I love natural health care for that thing. It helps in prevention. So every time we wake up, if we are blessed to have a shower and we open the shower and take a shower, we dare not take it for granted. Or every time we go to the stream and get water to fetch, or every time you jump into a river or into a swimming pool and you enjoy the blessing of water, we will not take it for granted again as we will begin to see more and more the benefits of what we are using. I watched a documentary one time of a gentleman that had a serious problem and he was told that, well, there's very little that can be done, but he wouldn't give up on life. Who would give up on life easily? Not many people. Therefore, he decided that he would use the simple things of nature. And in doing that, he changed his diet nourished his body with good food. He began to drink a lot of water. He began to take a lot of sunlight early in the morning and in the evening. He took enough rest as his body should need to take rest and he was getting better. He was trusting in God for his health and he was getting better gradually. He was being supervised by his medical doctor still although the doctor was amazed at how much progress he was making with the things that he was doing. The nurses that were attending to him also were pleased to see what was going on. And then, to round it up, he went to the beach. And he began to wake up from his hotel room at the beach to go into the sand, sit down and take more sunlight in the mornings especially. You want to avoid the afternoon hot heat, especially in this part of Africa that we have tropical sun. And then he began to get into the salty water. And every day he enters the salty water. He began to see the differences in his body and the healing that was continually going on. As he sees what was going on in his body, he continued. In about two weeks that he stayed at the hotel at the beach, 
significant improvement happened. It was actually a documentary. And by the time he was leaving, he was able to throw his crutches into the sea. The Lord helped him so much that he was blessed with the blessing of water. Keep in mind that in all that we do, everything must be done in moderation. Moderation meaning abstinence from that which is entirely wrong and then using in proportion that which is good. In water therapy, we will use the same principle. I will, by the grace of God, go over some basic principles that we must absolutely keep in mind because the simple things of nature also require to do them right. And that's why I'm emphasizing that you want to come back again and again at this same time to be sure that you see the demonstrations, how the water therapy will be given and how in simple ways we will show to you how we can use the things of nature to bring healing and comfort to the body. Now, it's not everybody that is sick that should take note of this. Not everybody that is sick that should be in a position to use this water. Oh, absolutely no. In sickness and in health, natural remedies are the best. One, it prevents. The other, it keeps in good health the body that is already in good health. When I study and I found that 5% of the entire population of the world are enjoying the best of health. When I read WHO definition of what health is, that it's not just that I don't go to the hospital or that I stay away from health care givers, that that is health. No, health really means that I am enjoying the best of life. I'm able to take care of my responsibilities as I should. I'm able to live life to the fullest, not just that I'm taking care of the basic needs of life, struggling to work, struggling to raise a living. That is not good health, but that I can take care of my living, that is physiological needs, what to eat, to drink, where to sleep, shelter over the head and so forth, but also that I can contribute to humanity, to the society, that I can give strength of body and life, that I can do that which is pleasing to my creator. That really is life at its fullest. God willing, using the things that he has supplied around us, we can be part of that percentile, increase the percentile to a larger number, more than 5% because now many, many, many more are in good health. If we are in good health, we will help others. We will not just be waiting and waiting to, to be helped. And with wars, rumors of wars, all kind of troubles in diverse places, as the Bible had predicted long years, years ago, we can see that the future is not really holding a robust atmosphere and life. But as the author of a book put out his title, when the going gets tough, the tough keeps going. I loved it when I read it. So we want to remain tough in difficult times. And the way in which we can remain tough is that we have some techniques. We have some knowledge. Knowledge is power, no doubt about it, but it must be the right knowledge. Therefore, you are cordially invited to keep an appointment with this program, Nature's Bounties, that we can use water, a very basic fluid that is available, that must be available if we are going to stay in wherever we are. Without water, we can't stay in any place. Therefore, we want to be sure that we are able to use this fluid to the best of our ability. But I do not want to, as I know all authors of natural health care and those who have been in hydrotherapy. And this is not something new. Since the times of the Romans, the Greeks, they have been using water. Now, we also want to use this water therapy to help ourselves. And we want to know how to use it. We don't want to hear how to use it alone. We want to come back and have a knowledge of the principles the cautions, so that as we keep that in mind, then we begin to show the demonstrations of how 
water therapy can be given and it is being given to a person exactly the way that we can do this at home. That's, that's the emphasis. We can do it at home. Simple things, basins, water, cup, shower, little, little things that ordinarily we will have at home. These are the things that we will use and then we understand the principles. Then we know that even if we don't have this particular thing, we know that we can choose something else because we understand very well how to use it. Now, this is what we want to do very quickly, very well, so that indeed each of us can be blessed by this wonderful healing substance, water, life-giving, source of life as it were, because even drinking it itself is one part, but then we want to go beyond drinking the water. We want to go beyond using the water externally. That's the promise that was made, and we want to do it because we know that it is possible. By the grace of God, there is nothing impossible if we trust him and if we learn those things that can help us to move nourishing blood from every part of the body to the areas that may be in trouble, to every part of the body in terms of getting healing to those places. Yes, when the Bible tells me, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Flowing from the heart is the issue of life. And that issue of life, we want to help it with the use of water so that every part of our bodies can be blessed. We know that the Lord is more than able to do all these things for us because he has promised and his promises are sure. It is that promise that I live with you at this time, trusting that you'll be back so that we indeed, we can see the wonderful things that we can use water for and be able by God's grace to say, praise the Lord for these simple things. I know, I understand that this will be our experience as has been the experience of many who have learned the use of water and have been so blessed to be able to bless others. Therefore, this is where we'll pause at this time till we meet again by the grace of God.